Hello everyone, this is Electro Llama. I'm here with a beginner's guide on going interplanetary. I'm going to show simple steps which allow you to go from Kerbin to any other planet. So you start in low Kerbin orbit, which I assume you know how to do by this point. You do a maneuver called the ejection to leave Kerbin. Do a correction when you're halfway to your destination. Adjust your approach. And finally get into orbit around your destination planet. Before we start, go ahead and check these settings, especially the always show closest approach for target. To build the rocket that I'll be using, here's the tech that you'll need. It's pretty typical by the time you finish going to Moon and Minmist. You especially need the solar panels and the efficient Terrier engine. When going to some destination, it helps to look at your amount of fuel in terms of delta V. This is the change in velocity when you burn through all of your fuel when you're in empty space. So in this example, we're starting in Kerbin orbit, which you can find on the chart, and you basically add the numbers along the path to your destination. In this example, do no orbit. So the total in this case is 2.5 kilometers per second when we're in Kerbin orbit and the game will tell us how much delta V we have when you're in the vehicle assembly building or when you're flying your spacecraft. And here's a spacecraft that we'll be using. In Duna Orbit, you can still get a decent amount of science. And during our mission, most of our maneuvers will be using this efficient Terrier engine, which when you look in vacuum, has a large amount of delta V. These bottom stages are to bring it up into orbit. Let's start with something you already know, which is a transfer to Moon. When you go to Moon, you'll be burning prograde to reach the orbit of Moon. But you also can't just launch at any time. You can't do your burn at any time. You need to burn so that you're aiming ahead of Moon, so that Moon can catch up to you once you get out, get out here. This allows you to do a flyby of Moon. Going to Duna is surprisingly similar. You're starting at a, an orbit around the sun, and if you imagine Kerbin as a spacecraft, you would need to burn prograde to move your orbit higher to reach Duna. You also need to burn at the right time around your orbit so that Duna is there once you get out here. So instead of the timing being on the order of one orbit of your spacecraft, you're looking at an orbit of Kerbin, or a year. So there's a particular time of the year where Duna will line up. This is called the transfer window. I recommend this website to figure out when you should burn. For example, going to Duna, you should be about 45 degrees behind Duna. And with that, we are ready to start the mission. I'm here at the transfer window, which, when you're starting the game, the first one occurs around day 215. So like I mentioned, we want to be going in the direction of Kerbin's prograde. Which means when we're leaving Kerbin, we want to be leaving in this direction. So we want to do that by using a maneuver node. We'll only want to burn prograde. And you see here, we're leaving in the direction of Kerbin's prograde. Maybe we want to leave a little bit later. So I'm using the maneuver node editing window, which is down here in the bottom left. You can activate it by clicking a maneuver node. It pops up. You can select how fine of, a, of tuning you want to do. And just click prograde, retrograde. And you can change the timing, right? Change timing by 10 seconds. There you go. So you can use this to fine tune your maneuver node, which is very useful when going interplanetary don't need to be zoomed in to change the timing. So we're almost to Duna's orbit. I want to go a bit more per grade. 
That looks good. Set Duna as your target. Here you have your closest approach markers. You can right click to keep it open while you adjust your maneuver node. So this already looks pretty good. Right, we're going prograde. Are we going a burning prograde and timing it so that we're leaving Kerbin's prograde? And we can just fine tune the timing of the burn to minimize our closest approach distance. So there we go, 66 megameters. And there it's going back up. So we want to be around here. You'll notice there's a separate timer now which tells us when to start the burn. It's telling us to start burning now. And here we go, We're using our Terrier engine, which is nice and efficient. We have plenty of Delta V, and we're burning locked on the prograde. One trick that I use is actually canceling the closest approach marker when you're getting close. This allows you to see the closest approach in real time. Let's see, actually minimize it. There we go, it's getting close. So we're actually getting closer. Nice. So here we are. I double click Duna so we can see it from its perspective. Just want to minimize this closest approach. And there we go. When we're halfway to our destination, it's a good time to correct for the relative tilt between our orbit and our destination's orbit. Duna doesn't have much of a tilt, but you can see a planet like Moho is quite a large tilt. So here we are halfway. If you look at Duna, we're flying south of Duna. So if we burn normal, which is near the north direction, you can see we're bringing our periapsis up to where Duna is. At this point, you basically want to burn in different directions and see which directions help you. It's a bit of trial and error, but using the maneuver node editor, it's pretty easy. So I'm focused on Duna. Let's try uh, radial in. Nope, that makes it worse. So radial out helps. All right, let's try prograde and retrograde. You can see prograde helps a lot. So we're going to want to burn mostly prograde. See, that's a little too far, but we sort of know what direction we want to burn in. So we can aim there, close that, just go ahead and try it. And there we go, inclination looks good, we're flying right by the equator on the right side of Duna, so that will be in a normal counterclockwise orbit. When you want to focus the view back on the spacecraft, look on your keyboard right next to the one button, should be the tilde button. Press that, automatically shifts you view back to your spacecraft. So now that we're done with our mid-course correction, we don't want to come in straight away yet. We want to warp right inside of Duna's sphere of influence. We'll do warp here and wait for this transfer. Next step, we want to adjust our closest approach. So if you look at this direction, if we burn to the left of our trajectory, that will bring the periapsis in closer to Duna. So that direction is always radial in no matter if you're coming in in a polar orbit or on the left side. So we'll burn just enough so that we're nice and close to Duna. That'll save Delta V, make it so we use less fuel. But we don't want to be too close because, as you might know, Duna has an atmosphere. The atmosphere starts at 50 kilometers. So 80, I think, is nice. Uh, let's do 70. Ooh, 66. <laughs> Sounds good. Sometimes it's a bit sensitive. If you do your correction when you're closer, it'll be less sensitive. So from going to moon, you'll probably know to get into orbit, all you need to do is point retrograde and start burning. It's a bit of a longer burn, 
going into orbit around a planet because your speed will be a lot higher than if you're around the moon. There we go, we've made it to Duna. If you want a bit extra fuel, it might be a good idea to do that so you can go explore Ike as well. Similar to a transfer to Moon. And if you have a lot more Delta V, you can try doing a landing. So I'll probably cover that in a different video. When you're ready to head back, basically do the same steps to get back to Kerbin. So I'm going to show that right now um, without talking over it so you can see how I do it. Make sure to check if you have enough fuel. Yep, we have plenty, 955 compared to the required 750. Here we are at the transfer window. Um, you can sort of think about, again, if Duna was a spacecraft, you would want to burn retrograde to bring your orbit and down to where Kerbin is. So you want to burn in the direction of Duna's retrograde, which is in this direction. If you're worried about your science experiments overheating, I do recommend going on EVA and collecting them. So that if they burn up, then you don't lose the data. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And stay tuned for future videos where I plan to go through each planet and show tips and tricks and different spacecraft designs for going there. As a sneak peek, here is a simple design for a Duna lander, so you can see the differences if you want to actually land there. Also not a very large spacecraft, but a bit, quite a bit larger than if you're just going into orbit. So happy flying, good luck and I'll see you next time.